I'm sitting on the bucket. Don't waste a Christmas gift on me with, with socks. Oh, right? come on, Just man. Give me, give me something. It's I, a give cool me designer something socks. <laughs> You are listening to Saints in the South. All right, uh, welcome to another episode of Saints in the South, episode Yay! number 50. Number 50, baby. Woo! 5 0. Uh, <laughs> big time, big time. Uh, hey, we are back in the Georgia room. Uh, it's not necessarily a permanent thing. You never know. It may be. We'll see. But we wanted to get back together for this 50th episode, and it is Christmas time. So That's right. That's right. Merry Christmas. Christmas. Merry Christmas yeah, Merry to Christmas. all. You couldn't tell by the Santa hats and the, the lights. and yeah. That's right. Frosty and Santa yeah, in the yeah. Yeah. right there. That's right. Some subtle hints there. <laughs> hey. Guess what we're celebrating today? Marcus over there being <laughs> naughty over there. <laughs> <laughs> we love Marcus Santa. A lump of coal in his <laughs> this year. Right. Hey, look at you got you got uh, you got a killer snowman behind you. <laughs> That's right. Ah. Let's talk about Andrew like that. <laughs> <laughs> well, hey, uh, hey, this week uh, we are celebrating Christmas along with millions of other Christians around the world. Uh, and to me, there's nothing uh, or there's something different about this holiday than, than any other. Uh, the spirit of the Lord is, is a lot stronger on the earth during this time, uh, I think, uh, than any other time during the year, uh, mainly because people are making a lot more of an effort um, to, to give to others, to, uh, to be more generous, more kind. Uh, just putting others uh, ahead of themselves. I shared the example last week of of me helping push the lady's uh, car out the out the uh, out the road, taking her home, and then 30 minutes later, a guy's buying me something to lose because I forgot my wallet. So it's uh, and I truly awesome. believe that that's because of the the, the Christmas spirit that that, yeah. that exists. You know, what what, what do y'all sure. think? Yeah, it's yeah. definitely heightened this time of year. Yeah, um, amplified more. And yeah, absolutely. Sure. Well, uh. <clears throat> To start out, uh, to kind of jumpstart us here, we're uh, obviously through with the with the Book of Mormon, and this week we're going to be uh, talking about Christmas. And I want to start out by reading um, from the very first part of the of the Come Follow Me section. It says the Christmas season is a time to reflect on and express gratitude for the birth of our Savior Jesus Christ. As you read and ponder this week about his birth and life, consider how your study of the Book of Mormon this year has strengthened your testimony that he is the Savior of the world. And so I'll ask you fellas here, how has the Book of Mormon strengthened your testimony in, in the Savior? Hmm. How has it not? Um, yeah, that's a better way to phrase it. Yeah, I mean, it's... it's, it's are, are, you, are you trying to pull a Morona here? Yeah, Ask, ask if it's not true. not true you know <laughs> we gotta look at i, I mean really it's that's a great way to put it uh yeah i mean there's there's the whole book testifies of jesus christ and what is christmas it's jesus christ i mean you know so we celebrate christ um as a matter of fact what's the uh, what's the scripture uh second nephi 26 225 uh, is it second nephi 25 second nephi 25 okay Man, that was a good 26. We, we had the things, right? Yeah, yeah. So he said, uh, yeah. All right, go ahead. You got it. It says, and we talk of Christ, we rejoice in Christ, we preach of Christ, we prophesy of Christ, and we write according to our prophecies that our children may know to what source they may look for remission of sins. All throughout the Book of Mormon, um, you know, we we talk about Christ and it, all these things here that it says. And one, one I, I do have one thing is it's funny you mentioned this and that I thought about this yesterday. I think of uh, the stripling warriors for some reason, because we were watching a video about the, you know, uh, Mary, the mother of Jesus. And I was thinking about the stripling warriors and how they knew and they doubted not that their mothers knew basically that they had testimonies of the gospel. They knew the gospel. They lived it. They showed it. And I started thinking about how mother or that uh, I want to say mother Mary, which I guess is appropriate, but uh, Mary, uh, she was full of faith. It keeps saying she was full of faith in the scriptures. And whenever she says, be it unto me, um, uh, I can't remember that verse either. I wish I was more of a scriptorian, but uh, it, it, she was always ready to do exactly what was asked of her. Like right away, she was right into it. And, uh, and I thought about how much faith she exuded all the time. And that had to obviously have an effect on Jesus Christ and his faith as he grew up. And, 
as I was, I was putting those two stories together with the stripling warriors, them knowing how much their mothers, how much faith they had and how much they, and then knowing that Mary also uh, had that same type of faith and that it had a major effect on Jesus Christ when he was growing up as a little boy and seeing her faith and, and uh, the things that she knew of God. And, and so I, I, I thought of that. I thought that was very interesting. And I've never thought of those kinds of things before. And I really think it's got a lot to do with us going over the Book of Mormon all year. Like yeah. we have really diving into to the Book of Mormon, making me put those types of connections together, you know? Yeah. Absolutely. Well, it, it reinforces everything in the Bible too. That's another thing that to me exactly. is more significant that we already, you know, you know, obviously if all you have is, the Bible, even if you, all you have is a few, like if, if you were living on a deserted Island and all you had was, you know, a couple, a couple books out of the new Testament, right. You know, you could have enough knowledge of, of oh, yeah. Jesus Christ, I think to be saved, to be able to, you know, for the Holy spirit to testify to the truthfulness of it. And there's so much more, you know, we have all the books of the, the old Testament that point to the new Testament and we have all the record in the book of Mormon, which reinforces everything in the Bible through the old Testament and new Testament. Right. And um, to me, that that just that second witness strengthens my testimony of Jesus Christ and therefore kind of, you know, even makes Christmas more significant in a way yeah. because there's more just there's more record there, you know, that testifies of Christ. Mm -hmm. absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. I, I, I believe that, too. That's that's exactly right. Yeah, it's been uh, yeah, it's it's been like a like a little Andrew, vacation. What you got over there? Let's go to Andrew. He's outside. With, he's outside with Frosty. That's right, Snowman. It's actually kind of been like a little cool vacation, like a road trip. You know, a lot of times. Um, how, how can I explain and it? It's you just, you uh, took a few road trips. I mean, I know. I, I, so it's it's pretty it's pretty cool. You know, your whole life you read about it, you have a testimony of it. But this year, doing the Come Follow Me and doing the podcast, it's like I made these little pit stops in all these areas. Sarah right. Hamla, learning about Alma the Younger. Exactly. Spend uh, a little time. Yeah, in each, in each these, little area. In each little area. And that's, yeah. yeah that's make, a good make way it some to put memories. It. Make it some memories as I'm going. And, and hopefully, I can carry those memories with me in the future and, yeah. and remember this year this past 2020 um so and, cool. and, and even and even the uh even the parts where it does talk about the birth of christ in the in the exactly. book of mormon there's there's you know nephi had the vision of mary and saying the layman not yeah on there on yeah the i mean a lot a lot of yeah. great things and yeah. uh yeah one uh for me this this year has been has been completely different than, than any way that that i've studied the book of mormon uh to me it's actually brought the I'll say, I'll say characters, but the the people, the prophets, the, yeah. the missionaries, it's really brought them to life more than just reading a story. Yeah. It's right. made them real people yes. to me. Yeah. And I've been able to see even more how the Lord uses imperfect human beings to, to accomplish his work. And it, it's, it's a testimony to, to me and uh, for, for me personally that even though I have weaknesses and I have my faults and everything, the Lord can still use me to, to, to bless other people's lives, to, to be an instrument in, in his hands. And that's, I think that's what's really been, um, had the greatest impact on me uh, yeah. this year. And, and you talk about these characters. I mean, I mean, not for lack of a better word. I mean, these people, you know, right. but, uh, but yeah, you do get to know them more intimately and their whole purpose, the whole reason why we know them is because they are testifying of Christ. They are part of the plan, uh, part of the gathering of Israel, their testimonies and things. That's what the Book of Mormon does. It gathers Israel as a tool to gather them, probably the most important tool uh, to gather Israel here in the last days. Um, and we get to know these people so well, as you're saying, and like, you know, really what we're doing is we're knowing Christ better through them uh, mm -hmm. uh, in their perspective and how they, their faith is and their hope and their all and their charity that they show their, their resilience and, and all these, all these wonderful things that they have uh, in the gospel. And, and so we know that better, we know them better, but we're ultimately knowing Christ better because of them. And, and it's like y'all said, just like Andrew saying, and I mean, you know, we're, we're spending some time there with these yeah. people. And whereas before, when I went through or studied the Book of Mormon, it was mainly just it was just me and just kind of reading. And um, I don't want to say skimming, but 
you get to yeah. a story sometimes and you kind of just sort of, oh, I know that story. Yeah, I know that story. <laughs> yeah. You know, I got that. I learned yeah. that already. Boom. But now it's like, well, even I even found myself sometimes in some of these, like we'll, we'll start into a story and go, okay, I, I think I know the story pretty well. And all of a sudden it's just, I mean, with like being here with y'all and, yeah, and, yeah. and just like, whoa, wait a minute. Whoa. I never thought of that. And, yeah. and even as we talk, sometimes things come to us. I think that may have been shown throughout the year. Hopefully it was at certain times that where we would all be like, wait a minute, I just thought of something. What about this? You know, we yeah, have a thought. The biggest so. thing for me, that's been the most yeah. significant part for me is the discussions because, you know, obviously we've all read the book of Mormon before and um, I've even read it straight through a couple of times um, just a few years ago right. when, when my wife and I first, you know, we first started, you know, dating, we had, you know, met online and we, yeah. you know, she was living in Tampa actually. And so, our, our nightly dates where we decided to read the book of Mormon together. And so, wow, we would, like, that's so pretty cool, us, man. You know, before bed every night, and we would read a chapter. Out of you know, you got a good one if you're doing that. So, that's what we did. That was our, of course, you know, she, she says now that was her her scheme to Are you willing to read the book of Mormon with me on the phone? She loved your accent. So, yeah, that's what it was. <laughs> your like, now, Marona, I'm <laughs> Maroni, Maroni, like but, macaroni. Like macaroni. Oh, yeah. But reading through, you know, it's like you, you read it, but it's kind of like you were saying, Marcus, is like, you know, you, it, there, it's a big difference between just reading through the story yes. and saying, yeah, I've seen it. And then yes. like breaking it down, like, yeah. and, and just talking to people about it and, and getting like a real perspective and seeing them as real people. And that's, yes, that's something exactly. that's been different for me during this experience is it, it becomes, it kind of jumps out of the page, so to speak. And it becomes mm -hmm. real when you start talking about, man, this guy, look at this guy, man, yeah. look at his faith. Holy yeah. cow. He was doing it. You're like, wait, wait, you're right. You know, right. it kind of makes it, it just makes it all more. And, and, and we, I mean, if we believe in the gospel, if we truly believe in it, we're going to, we're going to be all, you know, hopefully I'm going to be there with these people. I, you know, I'm going to try my hardest to get there and, you know, spend eternity with a lot of these guys that we read about, you know, with Nephi or King Benjamin or Samuel, um, you know, all, all these people. And, uh, It'd be a little awkward if I didn't know who they were, right. at least a little, well, well, before I ever met them. You know, and so, I think when you break it down and you get to the main thing, knowing Jesus Christ, I hope we, <laughs> I hope we've known him a little bit by the time we get to meet him. You know, and I, you know, yeah. So, so speaking of you know getting to know these guys, one of my funnest discussions that we had on on the podcast when we were talking about the difference between. Alma and and Ammon and their personalities <laughs> yeah, and everything yeah, and that, it, yeah. just, <laughs> it just it just again kind of going back to you know the Lord will use in insert clip here that's right yeah it's like a lot where we were like hey wait that's a minute right. you, yeah. you don't have to be a you don't have to be a cookie cutter yeah. member yeah. of the church you know yeah. to, right to, to have fun in the gospel to live the gospel to have a testimony and you don't even have to be a scriptorian like Marcus was You're, talking yeah about. I mean you so, can be the guys in the back of the class yeah exactly yeah, exactly you know, so. yeah like us. So, yeah, exactly. So, so, We're the but, guys in the back of the class. So, so before this year, I, I, no, I had a testimony. Like I was talking to my kids last night. You don't have to read it cover to cover, right? Um, obviously, obviously, do it. I mean, read it. Yeah, but, yeah, read it. But, but read, pray, ponder. It's like but to be a able piece to get a cake. Yeah, piece of cake. It's like cutting a little slice. You don't read, have to read, know ponder, to know that it's true. true. You ain't got to read it cover to cover, exactly. right? Exactly. But He's, but when you do know it's true, you will want to read exactly. It, and the experience and the power of it is unexplainable. Yeah. I mean, for mm -hmm. real. I mean, I, I remember as a twelve year old hearing people read it. It, it. There's something about it. There's something about the Book of Mormon, and for that reason, like Judge Smith said, it's the keystone of our religion. Yeah, absolutely. It's very powerful. So yeah, I think you hit on something um, because it, it, what you were saying reminded me of the way that the church, like seminary, has focused away from like scripture mastery. Yes. You know, memorizing yeah. scriptures and be able yeah. to pop them off to yeah. be able to like, even if you can't quote the scripture the whole where it thing. is as long as you understand the content it's exactly like focusing more right on the content of the scriptures rather than just being able to spout it off or do you find yeah. it quick and with the missionaries also now with um jacob you know like his the missionary training is so different than i'm sure it was it for yeah. all of y'all yeah. because you know there there's none of the script it's even funny so before you know he was as he was getting ready to leave you know we were watching some of the old movies you know we we're watching like the best two years and yeah. god's army and yeah. all this kind of cool and it's funny on those movies they're all like 
they're using the flip books and they're doing yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Jacob's like, what is that? Yeah, you know? yeah. Like, well, that's how it used to be. A lot be. of memorization. Like, it really yet. was. Not none of this, it's none of the memorization. It's yeah. all it's more just from the heart. You just, you know, you have like the, the discussions. Less robotic. Yeah, less, instead of yeah. discussions being a scripted hardcore thing, it's more of those principles that you cover. Like the first discussion you're covering this principle, and you just talk to the person and you right. know, speak from the heart and you you know get their feelings and stuff. So it's uh, yeah, it's yeah the, a lot more about re- kind of like the scriptures. The you're moments, not just reading it. It's more about the moment instead of the memorization now it seems like because you don't and it's always been i don't want to put like the church has changed its policy on like how you should obviously always should have been by the gospel i mean by the by the spirit Spirit. sorry um and with the gospel um you know but but like you're saying kenny i i know firsthand yeah you you would i always I'd have more anxiety wondering if I said it right yeah. than I yeah. did than what I conveyed. Oh, did I say personages or did I say personage or did I say, I mean, you know what I'm saying? You're trying to think yeah. of what yeah. you said and, and it really, and, and you know, obviously that was on me. It wouldn't be cause, you know, uh, Gordon B. Hinckley made me feel bad. I mean, it, you know, but, it, but, it, <laughs> but it makes me, you know, making me learn those things. But what I'm saying is, you know, it was to get to the point where you could talk about it in a way like they do yeah, now well, but that's right yeah without- but now it's it's really fo- i think the church as we go has been that way it's starting to get more and more um i don't know what the word is it's it's more Te- it's like teaching in the savior's way they yeah it's like classes. way more personable yeah, yeah, more you know one-on-one type one by one you know as we yeah. talk about and uh you know it's just, it's just really getting more and more refined I think is what a good way to put it. It's not changed in any way. It's just more just like from home teaching and ministering. I mean, ministering is just a higher level of home yeah. teaching and visiting teaching. I mean, it just becomes more and more refined, better ways to do it. Here's a better way. Here's a better way. And, uh, you know, so yeah, I've got a, I got a funny story about, uh, memorizing discussions. <laughs> um, so my, the, the first counselor to, to my mission president, he was a, he is a retired LAPD and he was, I mean, a bad dude. We, he was a, he was a bad dude. <laughs> Wait, so, was he in the LA riots? <laughs> he probably was. If he, he was, was uh, back. he was, he was, he was actually, he's been in several movies such as like lethal weapon. Nice. I'm, I'm dead serious. I'm dead serious. He's yeah. He, uh, he's a, uh, written written three books but we'll we'll talk about that a l- little bit later that's but uh the podcast that's, that's <laughs> a- exactly but this guy so we get picked up from the uh just to kind of give you an idea who he is we get picked up from the airport and the ap's drive us straight down the strip i, I served in las vegas they drive us straight down the strip and they say okay here it is don't come back <laughs> and then they turn and, and t- <laughs> seriously give you the, that's right, right. you say you've been here that's, that's right. all you, you get here yeah and then they drive us straight to the temple and, and talk about a difference of a feeling there going from <laughs> yeah, the strip to, yeah, the, yeah, uh, yeah. to the, to the temple. But so our mission president's there and, and he's talking to us, you know, and, you know, giving us, giving us low down and everything as new missionaries. Well, it was hard to focus on him because you've got this guy <laughs> behind him in the background. He's got these blacker than black Ray-Bans on <laughs> in this dark suit. Yeah. He's got silver hair. It's Dude's slick legit. back and son, this dude, wow. he, he's got, yeah. he's got a, face of stone wow <laughs> and uh so so this guy would during zone conferences he would run these drill sergeant type uh <laughs> memorization uh uh episodes where Gosh. where he would go down the line and we would have to so i would take like i would i would uh quote a paragraph the next missionary next to me would have to quote the very next paragraph yeah and if wow. you didn't get it right wow he would get on you <laughs> oh my uh, goodness that sound intimidating <laughs> 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 So just, just just to kind of give you an idea of what uh, of, of what we went through memorizing those. Uh, yeah, <laughs> it's a little different. Everything's yeah. it's, it's yeah. changed More by the spirit. Yeah. Mm. Didn't mean to put a so. Debbie down on her. <laughs> well, <laughs> you got hey, some what? Christmas the, the cookies. Whole, yeah, the cur- curriculum too. It makes me think of um when the uh the Sunday school curriculum first changed. Um, I remember I was actually serving a Sunday school president when the. Uh, the youth curriculum first changed and like mm-hmm. everybody was freaking out yeah because it's like what we don't have a planned lesson anymore? yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, what, are, no. what are we and supposed like, to teach yeah well, 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 well what do we do what do we do it's like well here's the topics and yeah there's, you pick you pick a topic Dude, there's and, you know, so each, much each information month, out there. there's like yeah there's certain points you hit on and you just you prepare a lesson yeah. you know you just you, you you know you pray about it and you you know you allow the spirit to guide your your preparation you know and they're like well i well, there's no lesson. Like, yeah, well, yeah, yeah. yeah. You, you prepare the lesson. <laughs> how do I keep? How do I keep it on the rails? <laughs> there's no rails. It, it's good though because it was more customized. Like, um, 
and that's why I like, you know, to the teaching in the Savior's way was more, was less, you know, because when Christ taught, oh, and this is actually reminds me of something cool that I've mentioned before in, in one of the previous podcasts that I really like in the scriptures, how there's, there's occurrences where people approached Jesus and they would say something to him and make another case somewhere else where somebody else would approach him and, and yeah. say the same thing, but he would react very different. And I thought it was interesting because Jesus wasn't responding to the words that a person was saying to him. He was responding to, the to person. them, to what yeah. was in their heart, because he could discern uh, the intentions of their words and he could tell what was in their heart. So he knew what they needed. Yeah. And so that's kind of how the, the, the curriculum to me, it was called, I thought it was cool that it's called teaching in the savior's way, because that's what it was. It wasn't like, okay, here's a, a script of stuff we're going to do in this lesson. It's like, you get to know your students. And that was like the first manuals that came out stress, getting to know your students personally and getting to know what their personal strengths and weaknesses are and what their needs are. And you tailor your lessons based on them, which is how Christ taught, you know, because even if somebody who's never met the person in his life, you know, he obviously knew them. And so, and really I, that, that really reiterates the fact that listening is more important than speaking. Yeah. Um, I mean, Christ listened to these people. He didn't listen to the words. He listened to that person and gleaned whatever he needed from that person to know that this is affecting them this way, or maybe they're perhaps asking it in this way, or they're coming from this angle, but he could, I mean, obviously he's Jesus Christ, you know, but that's such a great lesson for us to strive for that, um, you know, to, to, to listen more and not worry so much about what's being said, but to actually listen. And, I, you because, know, yeah, listening is pretty important because sometimes you can, people can ask the same question or about the same, have kind of the same, a similar question, Yes, but their, but their concern is actually about it's something different. different that is different. Absolutely. Yeah. Stuff, so. Very good point. I like that. Um, well, we're so going to go into any Christmas stories. That's right. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, yeah. We need to get more, uh, back more. Christmas let's stories. go back. Christmas. That's I right. mean, Christmas is Christ and we're speaking of Christ. So, <laughs> but right. we, you know, you've been nice or naughty, you know, <laughs> sorry, Santa. Sorry, Santa. <laughs> oh gosh. Ooh, I'm not getting anything for Christmas. <laughs> my, my, uh, my, my daughter comes home from school yesterday. And the first thing she walks in the room, the first thing she says, mama, Where's Frosty? What? Yeah. It's like, yeah. Your dad's got him out She there. thought she was at <laughs> Wendy's. That's right. <laughs> Frosty. That's Where's funny. my Frosty? Yeah, no, hey, but yeah, any uh, any Christmas stories out there that y'all like? What y'all got? Hmm. I got mean, you, look, you sent movie this movie. out earlier in the week, uh -huh, and you said, right. think of some Christmas stories. And I said, okay, I will. And... I've got a lot of Christmas stories, but very uninspiring. Like, like for example, for example, I, well, here, here, I, you know, this just popped into my head. I think we can all remember the Christmas in 1989, right? Oh yeah. We're, yeah. we're all enough for that for the right. snow. snow. It was like December 23rd. It was like Christmas yep. Eve Eve, right. uh, you know, then we had it, uh, what, 2017 or 18? Yeah. 2008, 17, 17. I but think. but but the one in eighty nine was one in eighty nine was right at bigger. Christmas. Yeah, yeah. It, was, it was right yeah. before Christmas. Yeah, the it other was, one was right after. Yeah, yeah. this one yeah. is right. You know, December twenty third. I'm pretty sure, and the reason I know that is because I saw somebody post about it the other day. Yeah, eighty nine. And it's, so December twenty third in nineteen eighty nine, and it snowed. I mean, like I yeah. was like, this is a movie. Like this yeah. doesn't happen ever. I mean, it didn't ever in my yeah. lifetime Down until here in then. South Georgia. Not in South Georgia. Yeah, not in South yeah. Georgia. Yeah, I mean it. Christmas it does period. not snow here. Yeah. Um. And well, like we say, it's done it twice and however long, 30, 30 something years. So, but anyway, that, I remember that. I remember being it just like that felt, I mean, not that we haven't had Christmases that feel like Christmas, but it was like a, a movie quote unquote Christmas, yeah, you know, yeah. like there's snow. I can build a snowman, you know, I built like a two foot tall snowman, you know, it was pretty cool. Yeah. yeah. But, um, uh, had a pine cone on, on its, uh, for a nose, but anyway, <laughs> That's South Georgia for you. Not a carrot. <laughs> Didn't have any <laughs> carrots. Have a carrot, Two man. foot tall snowman with a pine cone. Pine cone for his nose. It looked <laughs> nose as big as his head. And that's why we don't have Christmas out here. The Lord's like, hey, y'all don't know what to do. <laughs> y'all don't know what to do with building a snow. Y'all build a snowman. Yeah, I mean, what's up? You don't deserve snow. I mean, so but but you know that was just a great time. I actually remember my little sister, and she was really little. She was like uh, two, well, maybe three years old, and. uh she was sick and she couldn't go out. I remember seeing her look at us through the window and I felt so sorry for her. And I, you know, for like two seconds. 
because I'm 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 like eight, you know, or whatever, whatever, whatever they do not. Yeah, I was like, uh, you know, we're having a great time, um, you know, and uh, but anyway, it, I just remember that Christmas being super special, super nice. As a matter of fact, that may have been the same Christmas that I got my Nintendo. Oh wow! And that was huge. That was I mean, big. that's that's basically for for all you younger people. It's like getting a PS5 for Christmas. Right. So uh, <laughs> the Nintendo was huge, you know, and uh, I'd actually. Uh, I, I I think somebody I think my uncle would come up to me and says, "Ah, oh, no, I already looked. It's a box of socks." And I was so disappointed. <laughs> I was like, "What? Why did I get socks?" It was like a big, you know, the Nintendo box. He's like, "Nah, man." He's like, "I already looked. It's it's a box of socks." And I'm just like devastated. Like, are you kidding me? Like, you know, and, and I think of things like that now. I'm thinking I'm that uncle now. You know, I'm that guy that tells you to try. I'm going to disappoint you today. Uh, That's no. funny. But See how was, you get older that you appreciate a box of socks. I mean, honestly, I, I, today, I, yeah, I like PS5 hey, box of socks. That was on my Christmas list. I mean, let's box just be honest. Yes. I mean, we're. Man, we're don't, don't, don't. I, listen, I, bag I'm, still, I'm still in. <laughs> I'm still in the bucket. Don't waste a Christmas gift on me with with socks. Oh right? come on, Just man! Give me give me something. It's I, a cool give me something designer good. socks. I mean, come on. Hey, we all need socks, right? Man, you gotta have socks. Bags, buy those for me. You know, during the middle of the <laughs> year on a two on a Tuesday. <laughs> I mean, you know what I'm saying? Not, <laughs> not Christmas. Day. Not Christmas, Christmas Day. Man. Yeah. <laughs> Don't get me socks on Christmas Day. Oh my gosh! Man, so, sh show up my house on the Tuesday with socks. <laughs> Oh, it's Christmas on Tuesday uh, this year, probably. Well, I, no, it's actually on a Friday, okay, so it's cool. not a Tuesday. So All Tuesday right. would be more. If, if I so if I happen to have already bought you socks, I need to bring them to you on Tuesday. <laughs> yeah, you got to get them to Christmas me on Tuesday. Yeah, not Christmas okay, Day. Okay, don't don't don't, don't show Christmas. up at my door on Christmas Day with socks. All right. All Tuesday. Right. Yeah, there, there was one. Oh, I'm sorry. All you guys Go that want to send me socks, send them on Tuesday. <laughs> Tuesday, not Christmas Day. <laughs> No, I was just thinking the um, you know, Christmas stories is really the only one that popped out in my mind was um, when when my oldest son was first born. It was uh, 1997. We, uh, his mother and I were were living in a mobile home that my cousin owned, and there was a lot of drama there. And anyway, we had some issues and had to move out from there. Didn't really have a lot of money at the time, um, so there was a uh, the guy that owned a. Uh, the guy that owns a music store here on a one on city boulevard you know yeah 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 i knew, yeah. Him I knew you know knew him well because he knew his son you know played music and stuff like that and um he had told me i was talking to him you know and he told me he had the, a lot you know had a mobile home that was open and we could move in and it was right before christmas and you know i didn't have any money no, it right. was like don't give me anything down just 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 get your stuff. I know you need wow. to go and, and move in. And I was like, wow. That's awesome. And it was like right there before Christmas. And um, so then we, we we had moved our stuff in. And it was, I think, within a week. We were out. We were outside doing something. And you know, the door was unlocked. And, and while we were out, he had come in. Apparently, they had gathered a bunch of stuffed animals I don't wow know they were they got them so we got we got home we opened the door and there's a blanket in the floor and this like pile of like stuffed animals and stuff <laughs> wow for my son that is you know? cool I man was like, man it was i was floored i mean it was just that is it was awesome. like a, at the time it was like a miracle because you know i felt yeah. terrible because yeah you know my money was really tight you know yeah just working his job you know making barely above minimum wage yeah. and stuff like that and you know here we've got somewhere to stay and we've got you know this big pile of like stuffed animals and stuff for you know christmas yeah. and it was so it was really it was really nice it was a awesome. nice, testament man. to me of you know how that christmas spirit you know, right. you know brings, the goodness. brings the good out in people you know and it's it, it's pretty nice yeah that christmas that christmas spirit is a real it's a right. it's a real thing man it's uh a lot more you're in a more giving mood and i think it's got a lot to do with obviously it's got everything to do with our heavenly father i mean we are children of our heavenly father so therefore we have those some of those traits deep down inside somewhere in all of us yeah. Yeah. and that one of those biggest traits is is giving and that's what he does our heavenly father gives he gave his only begotten son so that we can you know, basically not die and we can return and live with him. And so, um, you know, giving is something that's inherently within all of us. But I think during this time of year, um, when we celebrate the gift of Jesus Christ, I think that is, it just sort of bubbles up to the top, almost, 
automatically for a lot of people. And um, yeah, it just goes to show you kind of getting back to what we mentioned in the very beginning about the the spirit of the Lord being so much strong on the earth during this time. Yeah. And it's not because that the Lord says, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to, because you're celebrating my, my birth, I'm going <laughs> to, I'm going to make everything. Right. You know, but people are consciously choosing. They're, they're yes. thinking of the savior. Yes. And they are consciously choosing to do that. And as a result, people feel the spirit more and right. the spirit becomes stronger because of the choices that, 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 that people are making. Yeah. The so, light of cross is definitely, brighter i think yes yeah, you know just definitely definitely there, there's an there's an excellent video we watched this last night it's john by the way it's uh, it's on um lds living i think or something uh deseret book channels uh on youtube anyway uh he quotes from a book i had to write it down as soon as i heard it i said i've got to mention this in the podcast it just one of them little things that's so simple it's just a, a succinct little easy little thing but yet it just blew my mind. But he, he quoted William, I think his name is actually William B. Smart. Uh, and there's a <laughs> William B. Smart. That was his name. And, he, and it's coming from a guy named John, by the way. So, <laughs> you know, these are real people. Um, by the way, William B. Smart. <laughs> well, yeah, by the way, William B. B. Smart. <laughs> um, anyway, th this is a real thing. Um, and, and the name of the book that William B. Smart uh, wrote was called Messages for a Happier Life. And he quoted from it. What what John, by the way, was doing in his little fight, it's called a five minute fireside. I think maybe yeah. some of y'all may have seen some of those, but anyway, and, and so he was just saying how sometimes there's there's certain levels of, of Christmas. You know, you got the Santa Claus level, which is pretty much the main level. I think if you wanted to say most of America, at least uh, gets into uh, the Santa Claus level. The second level was the silent night level where you think about the birth, mm -hmm. think about the babe in the manger. But the third level, he says, you, you know, is when you actually think of just Jesus Christ, his, his life, his whole life. What he was trying to get to was this. He said too many people, uh, if they celebrate Christ at all at Christmas, they want to keep him in the manger. And it just, I was like, whoa, wait, what? I was like, keep him in the manger. Yeah. And they only celebrate just his birth. And they only just sort of focus on that. And maybe that's the only thing throughout the whole year that a lot of people even do. That's maybe the only little bit of Jesus Christ that they do is just, oh, he was born in Bethlehem and good. And now go back to whatever. But he was saying, don't keep Jesus, Jesus Christ in the manger. Don't keep him there. That's, that's, Let him, yeah. you know, he, he grew up, he was a man. He taught, he, he died for us. He lived for us. He, you know, all these things. And I thought, wow, that just blew me away. I was like, he's like, that's, yeah. he said, so level up on Christmas. Uh, yeah. He said, don't keep it at these two little levels, you know, Santa Claus or in the manger. He says, level up and think about Christ all the way, all the way through his resurrection, all the way through today, he still lives and, you know, and loves us. And, and, and I was just like, I mean, I was sitting there going, this is blowing my mind. This is awesome. You know, it's just very cool. simple, but very, very simple. And, and I know that stuff. Yeah. I mean, you know what I'm saying? But it's like, Whoa, to put it in that way, you know, cause it is true. I think for a majority of people, and I'm not saying, obviously this is the time of year that we do think of the birth more. Obviously that's what we're celebrating. But what he's saying is don't just stop there. You know, continue continue on with his life you know and all the wonderful things he did which is what the book of mormon does is what we were talking about a lot of these scriptures um you know talking about his life and things that he did and, and things how he affected these people before his birth like you know samuel wow. he affected samuel the lamanite before his birth it was his born, ostl ostl samuel yeah. the specific lamanite. sam specific <laughs> sam specific <laughs> sam that's right specific sam. we'll have to go over all of our <laughs> sayings one day but Hey, I love New, Elder Neil A. Maxwell's quote. Each of us is an innkeeper who decides if yep. there's room for Jesus. Right. You, know, I, 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 you see it every yeah, every time this year around this time on social media. But that is true. That uh, is absolutely true. Good. Andrew, you got a you got a story? What's your story? We got a few stories. No, uh, so so we got two dads in here with sons on a mission. Yep. Right. So uh I you know, obviously well, obviously, but you know, I had a great childhood. I remember waking up, you know or my sisters and all. So I was thinking about my childhood memories. But then I was thinking about my missionary, my mission. My first uh, Christmas in the mission, I was at the MTC, Provo, Utah. So the Christmas lights, the Christmas music, the spirit was super strong. Yeah. And I remember on Christmas Eve, um, kind of got there in the front. And once it's been to the MTC in Provo, 
it's a big auditorium, right? Yeah. Yeah. And it's yeah, Christmas it's huge. time. Yeah. Anyways, uh, I remember uh, my companion's like, man, who's that dude right there? <laughs> now he, he said, look at that dude right there in front of us. And I, I said, yeah. He said, that's Donnie Osman. What? <laughs> Donnie like, Osman? I was like, that looks like Donnie Osman, you know? <laughs> really? Was it Donnie Osman? So, so, uh, so Donnie Osman's son was in the MTC with me going on a mission ah, to Italy. Oh, wow. wow. So all of a sudden, uh, it was just a, it was a Christmas Eve devotional. All of a sudden, they invite Donnie Osmond and his family and his son, and uh, he sings uh, Oh Holy Night, and, and then he sings solo, Mary Did You Know. And it, it was wonderful. The spirit wow. was strong, and afterwards, I shook his hand because I was right there because everybody was trying to – it's like a concert afterwards, yeah. you know. Yeah. Oh, let's go see Donnie. And uh, <laughs> um, like a bunch of screaming <laughs> girls, weren't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> now, some people just laugh. But, yeah, right, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but then the next day, Elder Dallin H. Oaks, an apostle, um, being it was Christmas, he had his family there, and it was fun. And they did something like Jingle Bells with sticks, and then on the last beat, they hit the top of his head. I just remember that. You know, he, wow. You know, it was just. Uh, I guess when you're family, you can hit your uncle or grandfather or dad's <laughs> head like that. But uh, even though he's a general authority, Merry matter. Christmas, King. But uh, I remember he said, "Thanks for the socks." So I remember he said, "You should have a desire to work." And I remember that on Christmas, you know, yeah. and, and that at Christmas, we weren't allowed to call parents or anybody at the MTC. Right. Mm -hmm. So, Trent, you know, let's fast forward a year later. I'm in Uruguay. Uh, it's hot. Santa Claus is wearing shorts. <laughs> uh, it's uh, it's just like, it's kind of like a 4th of July fireworks, you know. Yeah, it's yeah, very yeah. hot. And I mean, yeah. um, my Spanish is decent, you know, yeah. pretty good. Um, but then I get transferred to this area that – is dead. There ain't nobody yeah, here. Yeah. Little branch right on the borders of Brazil. As I'm getting good with the Spanish, I get transferred to this area where the Spanish is kind of mixed in with the Portuguese, Portunion is what yeah. it's called, or wow. Brasileiro. And um, and anyways, don't, one day don't, don't throw that stuff on me. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyways, and it, and it's very it's kind of very depressing that there ain't I many mean, people but, going but come to church. on, you got Donny Osmond the year before. <laughs> so I, have to, I mean, I have to I have to go back in my memory. I mean, it's got to balance out here. Man. <laughs> so I have to go back in my memory bank and think of all that snow at Provo. Yeah, 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 yeah. Don, Donny singing "Oh Holy Die" <laughs> in your. Uh, and, and he's, so, anyways, it's kind of just depressing, and, and because the reason I say that is, um, just just the work it just seemed very just nobody want to listen. So one day, uh. Our zone leader, no district leader, or no zone leader, did some like changes or something. So um, one day, a guy from Alaska, Alaska, you know, I was like, "Who's this dude from Alaska?" Brand new, um, he comes to Nobleia. That's the name of the town. So me and him, he gets there and, and he's like, "Man, we're, we're gonna make it happen today." And I'm like, "Dude," I said, "I said, man, I, I hate I hate to bust your bubble. This is kind of a dead town." Yeah. He said. No, nah, we doing it. We we we're going we're going to teach some charlas for discussions. Yeah. I said, dude, we taught one in, since I've been here. <laughs> <laughs> he said, no, nah, no, nah, it's, it's happening. So we're Thank going, you. we're going. He can't speak really. I mean, but his faith was strong now. Yeah. And I and um, uh, so I'm I'm going and I'm getting happy. I'm starting. He's he's uplifting me. Anyways, um, uh, I'm gonna twelfth day of Christmas. Background what, what is it? <laughs> the twelfth that never was. <laughs> It's <laughs> nah, nah. Nah, he, he wasn't saying he that, but, uh, that. <laughs> so anyways in Nobleia, we're out preaching and he oh. like i said this dude's got faith from alaska <laughs> and uh and we start clapping you know and people's like nah i ain't wanting to hear y'all wow and then he said dude i saw that guitar at your house oh and i had a guitar uh, you know i already i never really played it just on preparation day yeah uh, he said you know how to play that thing? I said, uh, yeah, I, I played a little. He said, uh, go get it. So we go get it. Honestly, <laughs> we, we walk there. We don't, he don't stay there and I don't leave, you know, oh, yeah. the missionary. we get there and, and he said, all right, man, we're going to go to people's homes and play it. It's Christmas. Yeah, Let's yeah. play silent night. Noche de, Noche de Luz. That's what it was. Anyways. Um, Dang. he said, uh, fancy. <laughs> he said, he said, all right, man, you sing. I said, I don't sing. <laughs> and he said, well, I don't either. And I said, uh, we need somebody to play, right? <laughs> but we did it but his faith taught me something so we went to these people's homes and you got to think people opened their door and uh i had a guitar 
You're like, I don't sing, but Donny Osman <laughs> does, and he comes so, in. So, uh, he I brought him with so, so that nowhere. So that day, <laughs> really tied together. It's, so I played some Puppy Love licks. Wow. And I some and they anyway. called it Puppy Love. <laughs> so as we're doing it, success, we started singing success. Because he he said, we're teaching 10 Charlies. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I'm like, dude, we taught 10 Charlies this whole year discussion. here. So anyway, long story short, we ended up teaching five which was a big hit wow. big uh, yeah. record for that place and um i give credit to this young missionary from alaska who had the faith yeah who didn't let me bring him down and who had really had the christmas spirit and that he saw that guitar and i got it and we sang and i would have to say that day maybe part of that donny osman his yeah, voice yeah. come out of, out of both of us oh, wow just, just kidding but it was a it, it was a wonderful um as i was reading my journal about this um, my testimony was strengthened that, is, you know, just have faith, even though we, he wanted 10, the actual number that was, that was expected out of us yeah, yeah. for that area was five. And we ended up getting, getting five. it. Yeah. There so it was, That's it was a very cool, uh, uplifting, um, um, story. If you have faith, the Lord will provide the way. Is there, is there anything you'd like to say to Donnie, uh, as he's watching? <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm sure he is. Hey, I'm, I'm sad. Sad. Yeah. Hey, it was cool though. It, it was very strong that day. So yeah. it was cool. awesome. So very good. Speaking of having to sing by your by yourself, I get y'all end up singing, singing together, or whatever. But anyway, on, on my mission, we would we would deliver what we called living Christmas cards. And so so if if uh, the Corbett family wanted to send the Obera family a living Christmas card, we would, we would show up at the, at the Obera's house, knock mm -hmm. on the door and, uh, and say, Hey, we, we are living Christmas card from Marcus Corbett and his family. And uh, we would like to share it with you. And so uh, and what we would do is we would read from Luke chapter two, uh, but we would also sing and we would start out by singing a, a Christmas hymn. Well, I went out on splits one night with, with, with a local member. And so as we're driving to our first um, live or uh, Christmas card delivery, I'm explaining to this member what we're going to do. And he's like, no, I don't sing, dude. And I'm like, what do you mean you don't sing? And I'm like, I don't sing either, but, uh, you know. It's, You're right. It's, I mean, yeah, you, know, like, you know, so. Yeah. He's Nobody, like, yeah, he nobody's said, expecting Donny Osmond. That's right, yeah, Donny Osmond, exactly. <laughs> yeah. So I, and I said, uh, he said, no, seriously, I'm not singing. I'm like, well, all right, you know, I'm, I got to deliver this card. So, and y'all have heard me sing and it's not the best. And so I'm sitting on this guy's doorstep and the guy's sitting there next to me, my, my companion, so-called companion. I'm so-called companion. Belt, belt, Thanks belt for being my, there for me, bud. Solo, yeah. belt, belt 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 solo. solo out on, on the doorstep. <laughs> I'm like, man, this the most uncomfortable thing that I've ever done right here. Oh, wow. But anyway, right, there's the bus, Jackson. <laughs> <laughs> yep, exactly. Yeah, that's yep. best. Oh that's God. funny. Well, but, that's uh, uh, lots of lots of good Christmas stories out there. Um, so so as a uh, as a child, I remember, especially Christmas Day, was that one day that seemed like my siblings and I really got along. You know, just uh. You know, and just with the family. I mean, we got along, but you know, it seemed like that day was just a little special. Yeah. And then as a father, seeing the happiness in your children and yeah. just trying to, you know, it's just that time of the year. It's just very special just being at home. And I'll, I've always said it's it, Christmas has always been a lot harder since I became Santa Claus. <laughs> I'm just kidding. It's, it's no, it, Santa Claus? yeah. See, <laughs> well, this is more of an ill fat. I have to, hey, for, I have all, to, for all gonna, you children out there, I'm he don't know what he's talking about. Yeah. Santa is real. Santa <laughs> is absolutely real. <laughs> so what, what did you think about them? No, that, I left you last year. Oh, <laughs> they were they were good. <laughs> Thanks, Santa. No, it, you know, it, it, and I, I I heard that. I, I remember my dad saying something like that. I was already older. That was my he special said, blend. The, the secret ingredient was, was cumin. In the cumin? In case you're wondering, yeah. Uh, cumin. Throw that in there. It's cumin. <laughs> cumin. Cumin. So what did your dad say? No, he, he, he just said, he said, uh, he said, you know, once I was married and I had, he said, uh, I think my son had just been born not too long. It was like first Christmas. He said, now, he said, uh, well, how's Christmas being that you're Santa Claus now? You know? <laughs> and I was like, wait, I was like, oh, I was like, oh, yeah. I was like, okay, so it's all on me now, you know, <laughs> you know, so, uh, but, uh, you know, it can be stressful sometimes. That's when we get into that Santa Claus level and we start 
you know, the, getting anxious about getting all the gifts yeah. and doing all the parties and getting yeah. all the food and trying to get, you know, everything going on. But, um, the, be the, the, the best part is when your three-year-old is extremely <laughs> upset with the gift they got and they yeah. want to throw it across the room. And yeah. You want to throw them across the room. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It makes you feel great. Yeah. yeah like, it's like, here. Hmm. listen, I'll show you who Santa is here real so, quick. So as a father, you know, just seeing the happiness and, and forgetting about what y'all just said about the throw dog. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> just kidding. Um, one thing that I've over the years with the calendar that the church has done is, um, the light, the world. How, oh how yeah. Wow. And, yeah. How, how, if you really, so cool. yeah, if you really apply that and, and a lot of days I miss, um, by no means am I perfect. Right. The first, you know, the 25 days. Or whatever, I don't, I don't but, think that's the purpose. I don't think, I mean, I, yeah, obviously, yeah, you can hit all 25. Great. I mean, kudos to you, but yeah. you know, you, if you're, if you're hitting five out of 25, I mean, is that not more than you did before they started this thing? Exactly. I mean, you know what I'm saying? I think that's the point. I mean, you keep trying to strive and get better. So but. I remember 2019, December 4th, uh, the, the actual invitation was to invite a coworker or someone you really didn't know too well to a lunch or supper. So I remember thinking of this person, and let's just call this person Donald, you know, this person. And I was like, man, I'm going to call this dude. And actually already tried to do something earlier at lunch. So anyway, ended up I had I had a gallbladder surgery and I, me and Marcus went to Chick Fil A that evening. Didn't really know the him that well. No. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> no. yeah, yeah. But I remember I, Marcus probably doesn't remember this, but I remember telling Marcus, "Hey man, we need to invite this Donald dude." And then we just didn't just maybe out of inconvenience or just oh, in a hurry. I do remember that. And then we showed up All and this sudden, Donald dude was he there. Just shows up. Yeah, he's yeah, there. He just Pulls up in the parking lot as we were talking. I yeah, like, and he sits wow. down and eats with us. And it was a reminder to yep. me that day when I left that God's in charge and that how how very important it is that, you know, that how I need to listen to the Holy Ghost because he's not going to lead us astray. And Well, I also remember thinking, too, like very seriously at that point going, am I going to follow through with this or not? Yeah. I mean, you know what I'm saying? Like we just talked about how we needed this. And then all of a sudden we're like, all right, here. Yeah. yeah, and it's like uh, put you to the uh, test uh, right uh, there. Uh, 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 yeah, so you there's know, beauty calling you out. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so, so it was a reminder to me that there's beauty listening to that still small voice. Yeah, somehow. I mean, um, and 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 for that day, I was reminded of. But how many times have I not listened? And you know, it right. could have been better. You know. Yeah. So, anyways, I so like the world is definitely a a something that's something that I I feel like it's very beautiful and very. They yeah. can help a family if you if you applied and yeah. try, try to do it, you know. So, thinking of uh, Christmas traditions um, that that families and people may do, uh, one of the things that that we do over at my um, at my mom's uh, get together over there at my at my grandmother's house and everything, and we always, of course, read read the story of uh, in Luke two, and then uh, and then we sing a bunch of uh, Christmas hymns, you know, anywhere from. Rudolph the Red Nosed Reindeer to uh, you know Silent Night, yeah, and just have a really good time with it. And and uh, a few years or several years ago, my my grandfather he before he passed away, he had uh, he had kind of gathered everybody around, and, uh, and this was probably about a year or two before he ended up passing away. But uh, anyway, he he asked. He says, Does, "Has anybody ever noticed over the years?" And when I say years, I mean you know fifteen, twenty, twenty five years. <laughs> He says, has anybody ever noticed that I go missing for, for a little while? You know, and everybody's like, no. <laughs> no, we've not heard nope. so, so. Uh, But every, every Christmas Eve, while his entire family, his posterity is, is over at the house, and we, and we, got, we got a you know, big, big family. They had, they had seven kids. You know, my parents had five kids and all the other. Anyway, yeah. just big, big, uh, big family. Anyway, he would go off down in the back, and, and he would spend, uh, you know, 10, 15 minutes on his knees out there uh, along with him and his heavenly father, just, just thinking, thanking yeah. heavenly father for, for all the blessings for his posterity and everything. And wow. that was something that he did uh, every single year for years. That, that's so, something wow. to, I think that's, 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 that's an important, man. That's, that's an important thing to remember is sounds like a good tradition to start Yeah, to, yeah. Get, to give gratitude for this time of you to give gratitude for the, the gifts, the real gifts that we've been given from our heavenly father. I think that's an important thing to remember is yeah. to give gratitude for those things. Yeah, you know, we, we talk a lot about giving this time of year and we may forget the, you know, the important part of, 
of giving thanks for those things. So yeah, yeah. we need to remember that. That's actually really, really cool. Yeah. So, uh, Ryan said, uh, your cousin used to go there every day, every Christmas and sing the 12 redneck days of Christmas. That's right. Yeah. And Brian said, he, you know, he, he, unfortunately he passed away a few right. years ago and, uh, he said he always remembered. He just always popped up yeah. and started yeah. singing the That's right, 12 yeah. red, day, red day days of Christmas. And I actually introduced that to my kids the other day on YouTube, and they're like, what is this? Five fatal shirts? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. How many, yeah, how many shotgun right. shells? Right, yeah. Three shotgun shells or something like that. So, hey, we'll, uh, we'll transition to uh, – before before we close this thing out, we're going to – we're gonna uh, kind of go down and and list some uh, some of our favorite Christmas movies. As a child, I'll say as a child, my favorite uh, was was Rudolph the Red Nosed Reindeer. Wait, you're talking about the animated, the yeah. the claymation yeah. or uh, not claymation yeah. or stop action? Yeah. Stop action? Yeah. Oh, dude, I was yeah. fixing yeah. to say uh, that's probably one of my like every time there there's very few movies or things that you can watch that'll take you right back to a place. That's one of them. Right. Like, I, oh man, when I knew that was coming on, like we knew it was coming on Friday at seven. I mean, you know how it was back then. Yeah, you yeah. couldn't just watch it anytime. That's right. That's right. And I was like, oh my gosh, I'm so excited, <laughs> yeah, yeah. you know? And, and I'd already yeah. seen it like 10 times. But yeah. It was so you good. You knew it was Christmas time. Oh man, it was like, it's like the best, you know? And uh, another one, and I mean, being we're staying with the younger, I, I remember a Mickey, Mickey's Christmas Carol. That was always oh, a big yeah, one. Yeah. Yeah. You know, that was always a big one too. So yeah, that was good. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, what you, what y'all got? What y'all got? I think uh, I like the Peanuts Christmas special. Oh yeah, absolutely. I mean, you can't go wrong with that. I, you know, these are things that I'd watch right now. Like yeah, I, I, yeah. I want to see these so, now. Right. So for years, it's like, there was only 10 of them. Now, like there's like, oh yeah, there's uh, like 500 yeah, on. So yeah. you're trying to like, I ain't, and I ain't watched all, all of them, but, uh, I mean, like modern ones that have, come, you know, like Elf. A lot of people like yeah, Elf. Yeah, I like Elf. Yeah. I, you know what? I like, uh, I haven't seen it in a long time, but I remember seeing it yeah. on TV, uh, Bill Murray, Scrooge. Oh, Scrooge, yeah. I just, yeah. it was a different, different, uh, yeah. I, I'm not saying it was like super good. I just remember like it come on all yeah, the time. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, what's the, yeah. What's the one with Kurt Russell that just came out a couple years ago? Oh, uh, Christmas uh, Chronicles. Yeah. yeah. So I Is saw that the one you about on Netflix. Yeah. Second one's we really saw, good. We saw yeah. both. Yeah, we saw both of those. Second yeah. one's really good. I mean, it, I, and his wife's in it too. Goldie yeah, Hawn's in it. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. That's good. I like. Yeah. That. Santa it, Claus with Tim Allen. I liked it. Yeah. yeah. The Santa oh, yeah, Claus. That's good. Actually, that's probably yeah. And then uh. I don't know. There's a, there's, you know, everybody wants to mention Christmas vacation. <laughs> I know, Christmas on. vacation. Come you on. can't, yeah. I mean, come on. I mean, Christmas vacation. It's a good one. You serious, right. Clark? Are you serious, Clark? Yeah. Serious, Clark? <laughs> I like the, uh, we just uh, come about Uncle Eddie. Yeah. 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 I like the, uh, the, he's sipping on the, <laughs> he's trying to sell oh. down and he's on the, uh, that gum. What's the, uh, eggnog? Eggnog. Yeah, he's still yeah. eggnog. It's good. It's good. It's good. Yeah, <laughs> I like, I like when, uh, his Rottweilers are drinking the water in the tree, and uh, Clark <laughs> Shaver Chase is like, he's like look, Uncle Eddie's like, he's he's hot. <laughs> yeah, he, he's hot. He's hot. He said, don't you want to take him out <laughs> back and get him something? To eat? He's like, no, nah, he, he's hot. He's he, hot. he just drank right. pizza or something old yeah. or something. I don't know. No, it, no, the one <laughs> whenever he says, well, Eddie, can I get you anything? Uh, he's like, no, Clark, I'm good. He said, can I take you out of the desert, leave you for dead? He's like, no, I'm good, Clark. <laughs> he's like, <laughs> or they're at the dinner table at uh. <laughs> And uh, yeah, Chevy Chase is trying to like he just they just started he's trying to try to really just get everybody going. He's like, man, I just saw on the news something right. about Santa Claus. Yeah, yeah. And Uncle uh, Uncle you, Eddie's like, you serious, Clark? <laughs> yeah, that's, that's where he got it from. <laughs> well, uh, well, here we'll, uh, we'll we'll close we'll close this thing out. Um, as I've gotten older with Christmas, it does seem like it goes a little too quick. Uh, you know, and I might be the only one thing. So it just seemed like you know you're trying to. If you know, rush and do this and that, and it, it, like that's that's kind of what I was getting to as a parent. Yeah. It, when you become Santa, you know, cover your ears, kids. Um, <laughs> it, it does become more. Uh, I don't know what the word is, technical or whatever the word is. It becomes a little more like, oh, did we get so and so? Oh, did you get the yeah. package? Did you get that wrap? Did you get this? And and you can't just sort of let the magic seep in. You know, yeah. that magical magic of christmas you know as a kid you know and when all you were worried about was to see the rudolph you know right. show and yeah so do, yeah. You, do you remember what uh what president nelson said on the first presidency devotional the other night i mean I, he he mentioned uh he's his wife wendy yeah had told him he's this he's all oh, we got all the christmas stuff all the decorations are out you know gifts got and everything and he's like and his response was well good now we can focus on the same oh yeah 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 that was really i was like 
okay, <laughs> we hear you. Right. We got you. Yeah. But, yeah, yeah, uh, it, but, but I will say, too, though, entering into this mode of a parent, I mean, it is more rewarding. It's, yeah, it's, fun. it's yeah. more rewarding to see, see your kids light Eyes up or, light up. you yeah, know, it is. And, yeah. um, and it's important to capture that. And yeah, you know, I mean, that, that's, yeah. that's, you know, all right, folks, we hope you've enjoyed this, uh, Christmas episode. Merry of, Christmas. Uh, of Saints in the South. Woo-hoo. That's right. Merry Christmas to everyone. Uh, we hope, uh, you all have some finish off the holiday strong and get ready for a new year. Um, we hope you've enjoyed uh, this season of, of Come Follow Me, um, these episodes and everything, and we look forward to, to next year. So until next time and until then, y'all keep on striving. Mm-hmm.